Assalamu alaikum, this is your brother Abdurrahman Murphy coming to you with another session of Roots Q&A. Today's question is pretty serious and so inshallah we're going to discuss it in detail just so that everyone can get the most benefit. Uh, the question was pretty long and it was, it was from a brother and the brother basically was telling me about his struggle with pornography and he said that he views it pretty frequently, wants to stop, um, but doesn't then sometimes doesn't want to think that he's being that harmed and so really the question he's asking is number one how harmful is pornography like is it really that harmful is it really that big of a deal a lot of people make a big deal out of it should they make a big deal out of it is it are they just blowing things out of proportion what are uh, the real issues in regards to pornography and the second question is how does he stop um, how does he stop looking at this now although this question was given from a brother it was asked by a brother this problem affects all portions of society including sisters you know there was a really well-known conference that happened in uh, this one of the southern states of the United States and uh, they had an anonymous survey and one of the questions on the survey was do you have a habit or a pattern or possibly an addiction um, of watching pornography out of all the people that took the survey there was over there was like hundreds out of all the people that took the survey 64 percent of brothers had admitted to having this issue but interestingly enough 25 percent of sisters had also admitted to having this issue right and those are only the ones that felt comfortable answering so if we think of this problem as solely a problem that males suffer from we're mistaken this is a problem that both males and females uh, non-muslims and muslims all suffer from young and old it's an issue it's a huge issue it's a huge disease in the heart that a lot of people suffer from and so addressing it is not um, you know is not too exaggerated we have to address these issues inshallah and that's what Roots Q&A tries to do is address real problems so moving forward the issue with pornography there are a couple things that it does to you um, and I'm gonna you know answer this from a purely uh, at be in the beginning psychological perspective and then we're gonna go into the spiritual side psychologically tons of studies have been done um, you know pornography is becoming more and more prevalent and so more and more studies are being done as it becomes more and more popular um, unfortunately and so there are there are tons of studies have been done um, from various accredited institutions and universities uh, one of which was saying that pornography is more addictive than cocaine uh, due to its accessibility and how there's virtually no cost to it because it's on the internet um, it's more addictive than cocaine it's more potent um, it develops it can develop a chemical addiction due to the release of dopamine there was a great article on sohaveweb.com that explained the chemical background the chemical backside of um, pornography addiction I'm gonna put that link in the info below inshallah so you can read it and get a better understanding if you or someone that you love is suffering from this addiction um, also physically what it does is it uh, harms the ability to enjoy intimacy with one spouse so at the time where someone does get married if they have an addiction to pornography or a habit of viewing it their mental level of what they look to sexually becomes fake right because these actors and actresses are all fake they're all plastic surgery they're all photoshop and video editing and all that kind of stuff it's not real intimacy and so a person when they become intimate with someone or try to become intimate with someone that they really love their spouse it becomes very difficult because their reality is actually what is not real and reality to them what is real becomes um, not you know attractive uh, not not you know it doesn't it doesn't uh, make them feel uh, like desirous anymore so this is really really detrimental to someone's ability to have a healthy relationship on another level what it does even before the spousal level is that it turns every being into a sexual object right for for females it'll turn men into sexual objects and for males it'll turn females into sexual objects and you see this now prevalent in pop culture a lot of times men and women before it was just women were referred to as sexual objects but now with the advent of Kesha and a lot of these artists Nicki Minaj and you see a lot of and Lady Gaga you see that they refer to men as sexual objects just just objects m purely for their sexual benefit and pleasure and this is a really really terrible way for society to move because if we don't see personality if we don't see anything and all we see is sexuality when we see one another um, things become very difficult and extremely awkward <laughs> at times so physically what it does is it changes actually your physical state and your mental state your spiritual state what ends up happening is there is a sense of depression um, due to the inability to get over the uh, addiction um, you know lack of focus in prayer lack of focus in making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lack of remembrance of God 
Um, because one of the strongest desires, as Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, he talks about this famous Imam, he says that one of the strongest desires is the desire for sexual uh, pleasure, right, along with the desire to eat. These are the two strongest desires, and he writes a book about this, actually, how to break the two. And so if, someone's, if someone is entertaining their, their desire of sexual pleasure so much, they lose um, the pleasure of remembering Allah and remembering his beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him. So spiritually, it's very detrimental. Now, the problems exist. A lot of people suffer from them, uh, whether, you know, on different levels. Some people, it's not as bad as others. And some people, they don't suffer, but people they know, people they love, do suffer. So what are some solutions? First and foremost is to pray and make dua to Allah to cure you or the person that you love or someone, whoever has this issue. You know, Allah says in the Quran that verily prayer, what it does, one of its functions is to prevent fahsha, right? Which is like disgusting deeds. So Allah says that prayer prevents fahsha. And Imam Zayd Shakir gave a really excellent talk about this. And he said, you, would you ever imagine looking at pornography or doing a disgusting act while you were in the prayer? And people answered, no, of course not. And he said, this is how it prevents it. So if you increase your prayers, if you increase the lengths of your prayers, then you're increasing the time away from disgusting acts. So pray to Allah, make dua to Him sincerely. You know, one of my teachers said that if you don't wake up in the middle of the night, at least once in your life, to ask for something, then that proves that you really aren't interested in getting that thing. So if you want Allah to help you cure this issue, or if you want Allah to help someone cure this issue from them, then you should try your best to get up in the night. Or if you already stay up late, just get up after you're done watching Hulu or Netflix or whatever, or browsing the internet, um, hopefully not the wrong stuff, but, you know, get up and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala late in the night because that is the time where dua is accepted. Um, also, as well, make dhikr to Allah. Always have Allah's name on your tongue, whether it's subhanAllah or alhamdulillah. You don't even have to say it in Arabic. You can just say, you know, thank you Allah. You can say glory be to Allah. Um, send a lot of praise upon the Prophet, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Make it a habit because, again, you're not going to do, or, you know, the person who's suffering from this is not going to do a terrible act if they're always remembering Allah. It's going to be very difficult for them and very awkward for them, um, you know, to remember Allah and then transition over to doing a difficult or terrible act. Another thing that we should do, um, you know, just generally, whether or not we suffer from these issues, is we should stay away from music, movies, and television shows that offer sexual promiscuity as an avenue, right? So, or like, push it on us. Um, a lot of music nowadays has really, they have, you know, the songs have really, really terrible meanings and really, really terrible lyrics. Um, you know, it's a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies, and so it's really important not to put ourselves in situations where our atmosphere is reminding us of sex, right? Because if there's no outlet for it for most people who aren't married, um, then what is the outlet going to be? It's going to be something that's not okay and not good for you, right? Haram just means not good for you. That's what it means. Um, it's forbidden because it hurts you. So it's important to kind of curb that desire by not having anything that uh, fans the flame, so to speak. So you want to get rid of all that material or just don't listen to it. Just take it away. Um, you know, a lot of times people are embarrassed when a television show is on and a haram commercial comes on or when they're watching a movie and a bad scene. People are embarrassed to fast forward it, but Honestly, that embarrassment is not worth, you know, avoiding the embarrassment is not worth the suffocation of the heart, right? Like this, these terrible things, they suffocate the heart until it turns black. And so don't be embarrassed if you're with your friends or your family to fast forward and just say, I'm not, I really don't feel comfortable watching this. It's not good for us. Um, don't feel embarrassed to do that. On another level, if you're already suffering from this issue or if you know someone who is, um, installing a filter on the computer is a very important step. Uh, installing a filter that has a password and then having a loved person, not the person themselves who is suffering, but a loved one, um, make the password. That way this person cannot, you know, log in and change the settings. There's a great filter called K9. Um, it doesn't bog down your computer. It's free. I'll put the link, inshallah, in the info box below. Um, it's really, really great to have on your computer. Uh, I have it on my computer, um, you know, because even though I don't suffer from this issue, alhamdulillah, um, you know, it's very important because these things can just pop up. Who knows what can pop up and what can spark a thought or a desire. And so it's important, I think, for everyone, especially families uh, with kids and, you know, with, with spouses to put this on their computers uh, to protect anything from popping up, even if the people themselves do not have the habit or the addiction of viewing pornography. Um, another step that people can take if it's a very serious problem is to remove their computer 
from a private area. So for example, if your computer's in your bedroom or if it's in like a study, um, then you want to make sure that you use the computer in public. If it's not a laptop, if it's a desktop, then now watch, this might be a little bit you know, dramatic, but you might want to take the door off of the frame, right? Because you want to be able to be in public, you want to be able to have in your mind that not only is Allah watching you, but everyone else as well can just walk by and see. This might seem a little bit drastic, but ask yourself the question, how badly do you want to stop? A lot of people come to me and they say, I want to stop, I'll do anything to stop. And I say, okay, take the door off your frame. And they say, no, that's crazy, well, are you crazy? I say, how bad do you want to stop? If you want to stop, then you'll do what it takes to stop, right? Taking the door off your frame might seem crazy, but trust me, it'll help. So these are a, a, a few tips that I can offer. Um, you know, one last one that is always good for any sort of disease is stay around good people. If you're around good people, they will remind you of goodness. And spe don't spend a lot of time alone by yourself. You know, it's good to be alone sometimes, but try not to be alone all the time. You want to spend time with people, and that doesn't mean chatting with them on Facebook. That doesn't mean chatting with them on Gchat or FaceTiming them on your iPhone or whatever. That means just spending actual time with people. Go out to lunch, you know, instead of, you know, eating lunch and talking on the phone with someone, go out to lunch with that person or invite them over. You know, go watch a movie with that person. Uh, you know, go to a game, go to a football game or a basketball game. Go spend time with people, uh, groups of friends that are good. And they don't have to be, you don't have to get together and just sit and open Sahih Bukhari and just read Hadith after it. That's not always, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu with his companions, they used to just have good times too. They were, he used to keep the lessons very short sometimes because he knew that, Always studying the deen is not too good. You want to be able to just get out and socialize and enjoy the company of other people. So if you're with good people, they'll remind you to stay away from bad things. And if you spend a good amount of time with these people, you won't have too much time to do negative things. And so it's a really, really good way to curb the habit. Keep good company. Brothers, stay with good brothers. Sisters, stay with good sisters and do things that are fun, but not bad for you, inshallah. These are just some tips that I wanted to provide. And inshallah, I really, really sincerely hope and pray that this issue that is affecting our community, Allah can remove the sickness from our hearts uh, as a community because we know that as a community we, we, you know, we, we succeed and as a community we fail. And so we have to stick together and help each other. Inshallah, if you have this problem, realize that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, there is hope, you're not hopeless, you're not doomed, there is a way and inshallah you will stop. You will stop. And if you have a loved one, they will stop, inshallah. Be there to support them, support yourself, inshallah. And I hope and pray that this will help, this video can benefit. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We will see you next time.